The erythropoiosis is a process of producing erythrocytes or RBCs from erythropoietic stem cells, which involves origin, development, and maturation of erythrocytes. The erythropoiosis differs with time during different stages of life. First, we have the fetal life, which is divided into three stages, the mesoblastic stage, hepatic stage, and myeloid stage. The mesoblastic stage lasts for first two months of intrauterine life, that is during the pregnancy where RBCs are produced from the mesenchyme of yolk sac that's in blood islands. The second is the hepatic stage, starting from third month to sixth month of intrauterine life, where liver is the main organ that produces RBCs, but spleen and lymphoid organs are also involved. Then we have the myeloid stage, which is the last three months of intrauterine life, where RBCs are produced from the red bone marrow and liver. Now moving towards after birth life. First phase is up to 20 years of age, in which RBCs are produced from red bone marrow of all bones that's in long as well as in flat bones. Then we have the second phase that starts up to 20 years of age, where RBCs are produced from the membranous bones like vertebrae, sternum, ribs, scapula, skull bones and pelvis. And there are also other bones from which we get the RBCs. Now let's get to the process of erythropoiosis in detail. First of all, we have the LTHSC, which is long-term hematopoietic stem cell. It is a class of pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. It gives rise to STHSC, that short-term hematopoietic stem cell, and this STHSC in turn gives rise to CMP, that's common myeloid progenitor cell. This common myeloid progenitor cell furthermore gives rise to or differentiates into MEP, that's megakaryocyte erythroid progenitor cell. This MEP then differentiates into BFUE, that's burst forming unit erythroid. And this BFUE differentiates into CFUE, that's colony forming unit erythroid. Then these CFUE cells differentiate into proerythroblasts. From here we get the erythrocyte precursor lineage. And remember STHSC, CMP, MEP are class of multipotent progenitor cells. Now getting back to erythrocyte precursor lineages, that starts from proerythroblasts. This pro-EB or proerythroblast differentiates into BASO-E, which is basophilic erythroblast. This BASO-E gives rise to poly-C, which is polychromatophilic erythroblast or normoblast. Then this poly-C gives rise to ON, which is orthochromic normoblast. This ON or orthochromic normoblast are the last nucleated stage of erythroid maturation. In this stage, the nuclei of cells completely shrink to piconitic remnant. Then furthermore, this ON gives rise to RET, that's reticulocytes. They are called reticulocytes because of reticular or mesh-like network of ribosomal RNA that becomes visible under microscope. And finally, these RETs or reticulocytes mature into RBCs or erythrocytes. Now let's see some important events during the erythropoiosis. At proerythroblast stage, the synthesis of hemoglobin starts. When we have the basophilic stage, that time the nuclei disappear. When we have the polychromatic normoblast stage, that time hemoglobin starts appearing within the cell. At orthochromic normoblast stage, the nucleus disappears completely. Then we have the reticulocyte stage, in which the reticulum is formed, that's a mesh-like network. Cell enters capillary from the site of production in this ON stage. And in the matured RBC or at that stage, the reticulum completely disappears and cell attains bioconcavity. So this concludes the erythropoiosis. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.